you know what? It's not even that I'm pissed that they want to argue with me. I'm pissed that they want to argue with me poorly. You know, they, they just want to throw arguments at me. I'd be happy to argue with them, but only if it's one of those arguments where, you know, I get to say shit and then they say shit that remains relevant in light of the shit that I just said, but they don't want to do that. They want me to say, you know what, you're right, without evoking an invisible, omnipresent, atemporal, all-powerful creator that loves me, this just doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, look, if they actually wanted to talk about the origins of the universe, I'd be stoked. You know, if I knew that every year at Thanksgiving my brother-in-law was going to get three beers in him and start talking about cosmology, I'd be looking forward to that shit. You know, where does the universe come from is a fascinating question, as long as it doesn't come with the if there's no God, then preamble. But that's not the conversation they're after at all. They're just flabbergasted that a person can be an atheist without having a Ph.D. in cosmology and evolutionary biology and solving all the remaining scientific mysteries in both fields and all the other ones. And also possessing the ability to fully explain those answers to a layperson in 12 words or less. So with apologies to all of our listeners outside the U.S. for whom this is just Thursday, and also I guess to those lucky few whose annual family gatherings don't include a three theological debate minimum, but the rest of us are in need of catharsis. In fact, I'd imagine at least a few of you are sneaking away from your creationist cousins right now and listening to this episode while you're pretending to take a shit in some desperate effort to maintain your sanity for the next three hours without screaming, you worship a magic zombie carpenter, you fuck. Your neurons are ashamed of you. They tell people that there's somebody else's neurons in their dating profiles. If the aliens came, all the rational people would try to fool you into thinking there was a 50% off sale on Duck Dynasty merchandise at Walmart or something so you wouldn't be around to embarrass us. Just imagine if all of our arguments were that stupid. You know, imagine if every time a Christian told an atheist that they believed in God, we demanded a tweet-sized explanation of precisely how many angels could dance on the head of a pin and then wholly rejected their worldview based on their inability to satisfy us with their answer. Now, you know, look, I, I, I know that some Christians have pretty intelligent arguments. Well, I, I know some Christians have well-thought-out arguments. I just don't happen to be related to any of those Christians. The ones I get to spend the day with are more of the then why are there still monkeys variety. And even though I'm writing and recording this before Thanksgiving, I can already tell you exactly how it'll go down. It'll, it's going to be my brother-in-law first. I'm already going to be on edge because fuck the lions and their inept bullshit. And he'll say, so if you don't believe in God, where did life come from? Now, the answer is I don't know. Or, or more accurately, we don't know as a species which is the most awesome answer in all of science. That's where all the fun theories and discoveries are, you know, right at the threshold of our knowledge. But that's because the answer is, I don't know, so let's find out. You know, look, despite what Ken Ham would have you believe, we don't know isn't the same as we have no fucking idea. We have a lot of ideas. We don't have enough experimental evidence to say this is probably how it happened, but there are plenty of plausible theories to explain the various steps between chemistry and biology. We just don't know which one of them is right, or if any of them are right. But science isn't just flailing its arms yelling, where the fuck did all this biology come from? They're doing science. They're trying to answer that question. And what's more, they'll succeed at it. You know, if you asked me 50 years ago, I couldn't tell you how cell walls develop, but today we got a pretty solid handle on that. A hundred years ago, I couldn't tell you where amino acids come from. A hundred years before that, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to definitively rule out spontaneous generation. And 500 years ago, I, I wouldn't even know what a fucking cell was. So run the tape forward, and what do you see? Eventually, we fill in the fucking gaps you're trying so desperately to cram your God into. A hundred years from now, your answer is still going to be the same. God did it that it was a hundred years before. And in the meantime, science will figured out the answer, synthesized it in a lab, and gone to court against your ass over whether synthetic life has a soul. And my brother-in-law is 22nd century analog will be asking where time comes from or, or, or why life uses left-handed amino acids or whatever the hell the next gap is. And that's what makes this so disingenuous. I mean, how thoroughly would I have to explain life's origins before my brother-in-law gave up on the God did it hypothesis? After all, look, this is a big question, and like all big questions, what he's really asking is a bunch of small ones with an economy of question marks. So how many of those small answers do we need to have? You know, how, how big a gap between the stages do you need to fit a whole God in there? Because if answering your question won't change your position, then it's kind of pointless for me to spend the next half hour of my life trying to explain spontaneous formation of lipid vesicles in the prebiotic ocean, isn't it? 
And, and it's not like there aren't consequences to this God of the gaps bullshit. Using God to spackle over the holes in human knowledge isn't just intellectually dishonest. It also discourages inquiry. And even the most liberal apologist has to concede that because the pursuit of knowledge does not give a fuck where you're hiding your superstition. And ultimately, it's going to be harder to fill in those gaps if they're all gunked up with a bunch of Jesus nonsense. I, I, hell, I, I just finished Robert M. Hazen's audio course on the origins of life. Highly recommend it. But even in that academic medium, we have to waste several minutes and several lectures apologizing for the correct answer to where did life come from not being God's love. I mean, they act like God is the first runner-up in the shit we know pageant, but an answer with no explanatory power is worse than no answer. And the fewer unknowns that we have left, the more vociferously the theists are going to defend them. Meanwhile, cutting-edge science is often incredibly expensive, and a lot of it's publicly funded. So any population with a vested interest in not knowing something is going to cause a problem for the people trying to figure it out. Look, we all share that same deep-seated urge to know. It's baked right into our DNA. That urge that drives me to listen to audio courses about astrobiology is the same one that drives my brother-in-law to wave the question away with a quick sprinkling of mysterious ways. He needs an answer. You know, and the, and, and the concepts of the cutting edge of origin of life science are crazy difficult to wrap your head around. So I'll freely admit that even forcing yourself to accept a self-contradictory concept like God is easier than actually learning shit. What's more, there are plenty of people offering to take that burden of inquiry off your shoulders for the low, low tithe of 10%. You know, they'll circumvent your natural curiosity, build a nice little compartment where you can imperfectly sequester all the shit you don't get. But at best, the compartment is imperfect because the urge to know is baked in. That's huge. And ultimately, the God answer is insufficient even for a believer, which is why ultimately I'm just going to bite down on my fucking frustration as best I can and spend the next half hour of my life trying to explain the spontaneous formation of lipid vesicles in the prebiotic ocean. And whether he likes it or not, by the end of the answer, he's going to know more than he did when he asked, and I'll have chipped away a tiny flake of his intellectual need for God answers. And then I'll go tell my cousin why there's still monkeys again.